So what is the best budget graphics card in early 2020? In this video, we're going to take a look at AMD's brand new Radeon RX 5600 XT, and I figured it would be interesting putting it head-to-head -head versus Nvidia's RTX 2060 to try and answer the question which sub-300 graphics card you should pick. I got both card benchmarked in 8 games to give you guys a better idea what to expect. In case you want to go straight to the benchmark numbers, you find this timestamp for that down in the video description. Now, in case you want to check out the cards in question you find the link to both cards uh, in the video description as well but before we look at how they perform in game let's quickly take a look at what AMD has actually done with the 5600 XT because what they have achieved is pretty impressive but hey if you're new to this channel my name is Robin welcome to RBN Hardware I hope you're doing fantastic so backtrack to summer of 2019 this became the launching point for AMD's new architecture Radeon DNA or RDNA and this is the first new creation since the introduction of Graphics Core Next or GCN that has been a thing since 2011. Now the company starts the new year with a new graphics card with target on the mid-range and with the 5600 XT AMD is promising silky smooth 1080p gameplay with maxed out settings. Now like the Radeon RX 5700 XT and the RX 5700, the newcomer RX 5600 is based on the same GPU the Navi 10. The big difference here is the cut down memory bus and a smaller memory buffer which is flanked by a very interesting price tag for its performance class. Initially the graphics card was supposed to go up against Nvidia's GeForce a GTX 1660 Ti but AMD changed their minds just before release to turn up both the uh, clock frequency and the power budget with the goal to compete with the RTX 2060 and the latter card has also recently received a price cut to meet AMD's new graphics card. And the RTX 2060 is currently selling for $299, whereas the RX 5600 XT is a bit cheaper, coming in at $279. It should be said that being the cheapest 5600 XT card, this Sapphire, you know, the Pulse card, it currently sells for $10 more. But chances are, when you're watching this video, the price has dropped on this card as well. Now, because AMD has been pushing hard and giving AMD a real challenge with the RX 5600, and the fact that there's just a $20 difference between them, I figured why not let both cards fight this out in this video. And in terms of specs, both cards are pretty much neck and neck. Both got 6GB uh, of VRAM, which is on the lower side. But to be fair, AMD is calling the RX 5600 XT the ultimate 1080p GPU. But yeah, it's something to have in mind that 6GB can be an issue in case you want to make the jump over to 1440p in the future for example as bigger textures easily eats up the VRAM pretty quickly. Anyway both cards got fast GDR6 memory and they also perform similar in game. There is however a big difference and that spells ray tracing and while AMD has promised to bring ray tracing to Radeon the 5000 series is still lacking it and so we're gonna have to wait a bit longer for uh, Radeon to get ray tracing support. The RTX 2060 on the other hand actually got a few Answer and ray tracing cores and while running ray tracing is a bit of a struggle for the RTX 2060 it is still something that is possible for the green team and that is something to have in mind. If you want my two cents guys I don't think the RTX 2060 is powerful enough to meet the RTX minimum requirement. The frame rate is simply uh, too low to uh, consider enabling ray tracing. Anyway, in terms of specs, yes, they are pretty similar. Time to see how AMD's Radeon RX 5600 stand against the modern games and how it performs in 1080. And as we look at the first test in 1080p resolution, we're seeing very respectable performance figures for the Sapphire Radeon RX 5600 XT Pulse. Now keep in mind, I'm running the updated BIOS, allowing more power and higher clock speeds. We're gonna talk about this BIOS update a bit later in this video. Anyway, the model beats the GTX 6060 Ti by a good margin, while the frame rate is sufficient to place the model above or near the GeForce RTX 2060 as you can see. Now you can't really see this, but it's worth mentioning also that the model approaches the bigger brother at Radeon 5700 XT at this 1080p resolution. The 5700 has however a general uh, overtake, but 
the margins are still impressively small and for details how the RX 5700 performs I linked up a video where I cover this card in much greater details if you want to take a look at that but with the resolution set to 2560 by 1440 the Sapphire Radeon RX 5600 XT Pulse continues to hold position against Nvidia's mid-range and the model continues to whip the GeForce RTX 2060 and although I didn't include the GeForce 1660 Ti there is no argue that the RX 5600 XT is a lot faster in general. I also did try overclocking and I was able to reach a clock frequency of around 1800 MHz. I didn't have too much time to spend on this but I'm very happy with uh, what I achieved anyway. Now uh, here's to the funny part, 2020 has just begun but the Radeon RX 5600 XT may very likely be snagging the golden statue for being the weirdest graphics card launch of the year. But one day haven't taken a natural performance position in AMD's lineup with the aim set on the GeForce 1660 Ti to the next day upgrade to a new BIOS to defeat the GeForce RTX 2060 and at the same time sabotaging its own product segmentation in terms of performance. I'm talking about the RX 5700. Wow, what an achievement. What did just happen? And there's been a lot of talk around this. However, what's important here is that this is almost the only positive as the Radeon RX 5600 XT suddenly becomes a more interesting mid-range card for the market but you gotta pay attention and choose the right uh, third-party cooler because in the last couple of days it has become clear that not every uh, RX 5600 XT is gonna be able to reach the 14,000 megahertz which plays a huge role for this model's performance success. I think Power Up has been reporting about this and this is something that you want to have in mind upon picking up your card. If you want to make this decision easy I would highly recommend you picking up the Sapphire Pulse because as we can see in this video you can look forward to really good performance for the money and the Sapphire Pulse coming in at 279 US dollars is an extremely strong card in the middle class segment against the green team. It goes up right next to the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti but this card has nothing to say in regards to performance as the 5600 is so much faster and the performance difference between the Sapphire Radeon RX 5600 XT and the GeForce RTX 2060 is quite marginal and in the end it's more about what types of games you're planning on playing as well as what functions and features you care about. Now some people would argue that ray tracing is an important factor for the Nvidia card however in my opinion the performance is simply just not there to consider it. I kind of feel like Nvidia missed the boat with RTX 2060 makes it so hard to like this card and recommend it to be honest because of that reason alone. Something worth mentioning is that the Sapphire Pulse is one of few models that comes with the graphics card memory running at 14,000 megahertz and this is providing a nice performance boost. Together with a heavily factory overclocked Navi 10 chip, we're getting a very strong graphics card that can actually compete with the more expensive GeForce RTX 2060 and on top of this we're also getting a very nice cooling solution uh, in the form of the company's Dual X variant and this keeps both temperatures and noise levels in check and during low it is also very silent and thanks to see my passive fan curve it stays completely silent when you're not gaming on it and to make this even better it's also possible to choose between two different performance profiles for example you got the silent profile if you for example prefer a completely silent card now on the downside we have the fact that the first batch of cards arriving in stores now comes with an older and slower bias version and it's up to the end consumer you know you and me to update this which can be a bit overwhelming for some people however for any enthusiasts out there this shouldn't be uh, too complicated and Safari actually made a guide showing exactly how it's done and with a recommendation price tag of 279 US dollars the Safari Radeon RX 5600 XT uh, Pulse is an extremely interesting alternative in the middle class graphics card uh, segment and this is undoubtedly an excellent product and I can't recommend this enough to anyone that is looking for ultimate 1080p uh, gaming experience who also leans towards 1440p. Now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys over there. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. As always, if you got any questions, please let me know in the comments below.